Well, right now we have a spotlight session which is coming up on securing national cyberspace with advanced cyber defense technologies. We have with us Dr. Gavi uh, Siboni, the director of the Military and Strategic Affairs Program and Cybersecurity Program, the Institute for National Security Studies, Israel. Well, Professor Gavi is a national security specialist and a director of the Military and Strategic Affairs Program, as well as the Cybersecurity Program at the Tel Aviv University's, University's Institute for National Security Studies. Well, Professor Saboni is also the editor of Cyber Intelligence and a security ju uh, journal. He serves as a senior consultant to the IDF and other Israeli security organizations. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now it is time to pass on to Dr. Gabi. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, uh, I thought that uh, I would discuss today uh, the issue of uh, <clears throat> national cyber defense in a, in a way of, um, let's say, the conflict that arises between the government uh, and agencies and institutions and the private sector. Uh, the, I normally say that uh, in a cyber crisis, you have one crisis, but very contradicting, contradicting motivations and interests between the government and the private sector. So with your permission, I will, I will relate to that because I think it's a very important issue. And I think you discussed so much a variety of technologies and technologies is, uh, I, I, I don't want to tease you with more technologies. And so I will go to the more methodological issue of, uh, of these conflicts and, uh, and discuss it with you. With your permission, I will share, share uh, one slide that I developed for this, uh, conversation, so just one second. <coughs> so uh, this is just an intro, it's okay. But this is my slide. Let's see that it uh, moves away. Okay. <coughs> so what you see here that I've tried to put on one slide, uh, the whole problem, and we will try to discuss this uh, as we speak. So uh, the issue is the relations, and the interface of government agencies and the private sector. That's, uh, as I call this lecture, one crisis contradicting, contradicting interests. Because uh, you would see uh, that uh, we cannot rely that all of the players, when you have a crisis, regardless where the crisis takes place, when you have a cyber crisis, players are pushing to the same direction, which they are not. And we have to try to understand the conflicts and the interest of each, uh, of each uh, part to be able to, to mitigate the crisis in the best, the best way. So when I'm talking on a, about a crisis, <coughs> I'm talking about, of course, a cyber crisis. Let's assume that uh, there is a a cyber, which is, is much more difficult when it, the cyber crisis is happening in one of the uh, private sector entities, say a bank or say an insurance company or a national exchange or whatever. Then the problem is very extreme. And I would like to talk about this kind of example. But let's first try to map the entities that are the players and say that this kind of crisis, because coming from Israel, I don't know about the other uh, party, the other the attenders uh, of this uh, of this uh, lecture. But coming from Israel, we have peace time, routine time, which is uh, a day-to-day -day, uh, behavior. But we have also emergency times, or sometimes even war. And this crisis can happen during these times, and you have to way how to handle this crisis when you have another much more severe crisis if you are involved in actually kinetic or cyber crisis, which is a more political one that is happening while, you know, let's say, you are acting your bank or whatever. So let's, uh, first of all, <coughs> try to map on the left. Who are the government? Who are, when I'm saying the government, who are the entities that can have influence or the private sector or have any interface on the private sector uh, cyber crisis? Of course, 
we will start with the intelligence agencies. Any state has intelligence agencies. Some agencies are focused internally for internal security. Some agencies are focused externally and look uh, externally. All those agencies are gathering uh, intelligence, evaluating it, and providing this intelligence to the decision makers of the government. Another entity would be the military. Of course, military is, uh, I could put the military, the first one, military is, let's say, the biggest entity uh, that, that uh, 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 the government has normally. And, uh, and it's very important to understand the interest of the, the military when there is a crisis, as I mentioned. The police, of course, is there. Uh, civilian cyber defense authorities, is, Israel has a civilian uh, directorate, and there are some authorities involved. I think uh, that the world have developed in the last uh, five years, and uh, normally states would have <coughs> some kind of uh, cyber defense, civilian cyber defense entity. Regulators, of course, there are the regulators, financial regulators, insurance regulators, privacy, privacy authorities, and other regulators that are active and may have a say on whatever business you do in the private sector. Tax authority, of course, there is an issue of money laundering and there is a variety of issues, and they have also reinforcement uh, authorities. <clears throat> so those are the players. On the other side, we have the private sector players. So we know, we know who they are. Financial sector, of course, it's, uh, it spans from banks, insurance, uh, exchanges, uh, investment, uh, large investment houses. So it's, uh, the financial sector is very big. Industrial manufacturing is also something very, you know, uh, we can have pharmaceutical industry, you can have a variety of industry that uh, is actually <clears throat> very heavy in the economy of any state. And the big ones might be very much if they are affected, it can create a, an economic, uh, let's say, an issue to the, the, the wealth of the country. Communication sector is very important. All the suppliers of, uh, of communication, either cellular <coughs> and, of course, uh, <coughs> internet, a variety of communication uh, providers. Energy sector, of course, health sector, this is, goes without saying. Some of them are government, but we treat them as, as entities that have different, <coughs> even, if, even in some countries that health, some of the health sector is government owned, still its behavior and security is more of a, of a private sector uh, oriented. So those are the two, <coughs> the two groups that, uh, that uh, once a crisis happens, they, they are active, each one from their own side. Now let's look at the interests of the government side. Then I will, I will map those interests and then I will go to an example to, to show you how these interests can, can contradict. So you see that uh, the agencies, the government agencies, each one has its own mission, its own goal, and they need to fulfill their goal. So if you are an intelligence agency, probably, your issue is to gather intelligence and to analyze it. If you are a military, you will defend your security and the country and the citizens. Uh, you know, the police prevents crime and enforce rules. Uh, we need the regulators will uh, maintain sector stability and functioning and uh, prevent fraud, tax authorities, a variety of, uh, you can just understand what I'm saying here, that uh, each one has its own mission and when they try to fulfill their own mission, normally they look like, uh, you know, a horse with those on the two eyes. They look on their mission. They, they don't care what's going on on the left or the side of their, let's say, their view. Normally this is what happens. Now on the other side, the business sector, when uh, there is a crisis, they want to make sure that they have business continuity as, full, as, as soon as possible, as, as quick as possible. They want to make sure that their data uh, integrity and availability is there. And their privacy is not uh, compromised of their clients or whatever, the um, employees. Any privacy is, is an issue. And both because they don't want to, you know, to, lose, to, to jeopardize client privacy, but sometimes they're also affected by regulation and they have to make sure that 
uh, they, they maintain privacy of their clients or their employees because of regulation too. And there are, of course, legal, legal and regulatory uh, implications. They want to cut their losses. Okay, if there is a crisis, they want to cut their losses. Uh, to prevent reputation losses, of course, this goes together because cutting losses is more of an immediate issue, but if you lose your, uh, your reputation, you will cut your losses or your value in the long term. So this, uh, they are more connected. And maintain their client base, of course, that the clients don't understand that we have a problem with this entity, let's go to another one. So this is just a pinpoint in a, you know, in a nutshell, the different interests. Now, let's take an example of a crisis. Let's make it for, an, in a, uh, it can be any of those uh, entities, but let's go for a financial institution, a large bank, that the bank has been hacked. And there is a problem in the bank. Now, let's see, let's go through this uh, scenario. The, the team, the IT team, the cyber team, the CISO team, all the, those guys, nice guys, they have a problem, assume that they identify the problem and they try to mitigate it and to go with their BIA, business impact uh, assessment or analysis and to make sure that they can come back to normal as soon as possible. That's the, the goal of the bank. They don't care. Well, they might care, but it's not within their scope. They don't care who did it. They just want to, to be behind it. They want to stop their bleeding if they found that they're now they're bleeding and uh, some money is stolen. And you, you know, I don't need to talk about real life experience. I think all of you, all this, kind, this uh, respectful, respectful audience can imagine from his own experience that there are numerous uh, entities that have been hacked and they, were, they, they bled, they, they were bleeding uh, a very long time. So you want to stop the bleeding and stop money losses and to make sure that you, you the, the, and, and the financial uh, institu institution make sure that they know the integrity of the data was not compromised and the data is available for the, let's say the, the, in the, it's a bank for the, all the branch managers. So they, if I'm a client, I want to, to know what's going on with my account. So it's, it's, you know, if I'm a client and I come to a bank and I want to know uh, what's going on when I'm an account and they tell me, look, we don't know, we have a problem come in a couple of hours, this, is, this immediately begins a chaotic situation. You don't want to be there. So you want to make sure that you have availability and you, you, know, you create some kind of a, a fallback position, you create, a, you create backups, a variety of, of techniques to, 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 see, to see that your, your data is really, what you see is the real data, is in, in, uh, its integrity is, is intact, and also it is available both for the clients and for the, let's say, the interface of the bank with the clients. And of course, you don't want to be in a situation when, where, where let's say big clients or any client, their data, their PNL, uh, you know, PNL reports, whatever they have in the bank have been made public and this is, uh, can be catastrophic. So uh, <clears throat> if this crisis happens, the, the team, the, the, the emergency team assume that uh, the bank has its own uh, crisis management team, they begin working and try to understand and try to recover as quick as possible. But let's assume, which um, I'm talking about real life uh, events, that uh, this hack has been done by a political or a, even a criminal entity that's connected to the political side of that country. For example, if uh, a bank is hacked in Israel, it might be the case that uh, Iranian, which is an enemy of Israel, Iranian hacking group is behind it. And it's, uh, someone wants to know if this is Iranian or not. The bank has an obligation. He has to report to the regulators and sometimes to security uh, agencies about this hack, about this problem. And they need to report and they report. As they report, sometimes, uh, you know, it has to report also to the police because they don't know it, it might be a criminal issue. As they report, <clears throat> all those players, depending on the, let's say, severeness, but I'm talking about something, some things that really happen in real life. They immediately report to the bank, come to the bank with their teams, and they say, well, sorry, look, <clears throat> if I'm an intelligence agency, I go to the bank with an authority which uh, sometimes I have a, a legal authority from the state. In Israel, there are some, some, you know, some 
rules about it. I go to the bank and say, stop. I don't want you to stop bleeding. I want you to continue because I want to track where this, uh, in, do my intelligence research, where this, uh, where this attack came from. Sometimes it's the police and they want to understand to collect intelligence through your text. So they come, they might want to take over your computers. They want, might sometimes want to compensate the computers, take them to their offices and to begin putting their special teams and see what's going on. So here we see that there is completely different interest between the state and the private sector. Private sector wants to stop and immediately go back to work. The you know, government side says, no, so I'm sorry. Uh, we need to know where it came from, came from and we need to know whether we need to respond in, in our way, depending what kind of zone. They don't care very much for the shareholders of the bank and they don't care very much that, uh, that uh, the bank is continuing bleeding. And again, I'm telling you um, um, real life experience in, 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 in this kind of thing. So this immediately creates a very difficult, um, a difficult discussion and situation with the management of the bank in our example. So the bank now needs to decide how they want to react. Either they want to cooperate with the, the agencies that are there coming there to see what's going on. I can assume that the regulators guys would also want to know because they want to know if you violated the, uh, the regular regulatory issues and to make sure that, that if there is a exposure, a legal exposure that they have to, they can, they can reinforce it. Though regulators normally do not come in real time, but they want to make sure that in real time that the data, the, the logs, and the historical data that is recorded is available for them. So they might come to make sure that uh, nobody destroys any relevant data of the regulators. And the same goes with tax authorities, of course. Each one of them has its own legal framework to make sure that they, they do it, uh, depending on, of course, depending on the legal framework of the, the specific state. Now, the management of the bank in our, or the private sector entity that had been X, is really put in a very narrow dire straits and to understand what are they going to do. Are they trying to fight the regulators or the fight the government entities? in real time and go to court and tell them, no, we don't, we want you to stop their activity because this creates now a, 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 a very, very deep crisis, much more deeper than we were in the first place. So they can decide to go to this direction or they can decide to cooperate <coughs> with all the costs that come to the cooperation. This is a very extreme situation and you have to know that uh, without uh, I've heard the last session that um, exercising, more exercising, you know, when you exercise, it makes you much better and you improve your, your skills, but you improve also the degrees of freedom that you have. And when you put scenarios and you create more scenarios and more scenarios, most complicated scenarios, like the one I've, I've just described, which is a very, uh, just a very high level scenario. You can go very deep and you see that sometimes it's, uh, it goes, and very extreme, extreme uh, dilemmas from the metaphor or the management of the uh, entity. So only if you do that, you exercise, you run scenarios, you run, you, you, you simulate uh, different scenarios, only then you can be a little bit more prepared to such, uh, to such crisis. So I thought that uh, in this lecture that when I spoke about the, the, let's say the national defense of cybersecurity, I will just put a spotlight on a certain issue, which is sometimes very dramatic to the way you behave. Now I will tell you also that it, what I uh, described was in, in, in routine time. Just imagine that your financial sector is attacked by your enemy during a kinetic, uh, a kinetic uh, conflict or during war. So then all what I described now become, becomes um, uh, let's say amplified in, a, in, in an amazing value. And then you have to also make sure that you have common language with the, all the regulators. So in Israel, what I try to do is to, to make 
those two groups stick together and those two groups to, to, to run together some simulation and to make sure that they create common language, that each one understand the interest of the other person or the other entity, to make sure that they find the, 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 the best route to, to move, both during routine or peace times, but also during emergency. And uh, at least they might not agree, but at least understand um, each, each mission of each uh, government entity and the government guys understand what the private sector is, is, is trying to do during a crisis. I think I uh, will wrap up and if there is any question, I will be happy to take. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Gabi. Well, I'm just, uh, you know, running in short of time. Uh, currently, there aren't any questions, Dr. Gabi, right now, but we really value your presence at the World Cybersecurity Summit. Thank you so much for your valuable insights after all the knowledge you've garnered all these years. Thank you so much, Dr. Gabby. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.